typically while using in channel MOSFET like this IRS at 44 and we connected source terminal to ground. And by applying the voltage at the gate terminal greater than the threshold voltage, we can turn the MOSFET on. But there are some applications where we need to switch on the high side, like in a buck converter. For that, we can use P-channel MOSFETs like this IRF 9640, but usually they have significantly higher rate to source resistance. And if in case we try to use N channel MOSFET as a high side switcher, there will be a significant voltage drop across it, as you can see here. This is due to the fact that voltage across the load rises as we turn on the MOSFET. To understand it better, here is an example. Suppose we have a light bulb connected to the source of our N channel MOSFET. Initially, when it is turned off, the source voltage is zero. And if we now apply the sufficient gate voltage, we can turn the MOSFET on which results in increasing the source voltage and since our gate voltage is constant, the gate to source voltage decreases and as it drops below the threshold voltage, the MOSFET turns off and the whole cycle repeats. This results in a reduced output voltage. To counteract this problem, we will need a way to increase gate voltage as source voltage rises. The common way to do it is by using a method called bootstrapping. But before diving into bootstrapping circuits, let's discuss capacitors for a minute. We all know that capacitors store equal and opposite charges on their plate and opposite charges attract each other. Pretty basic. Now let's say that our capacitor is charged to V volts initially and if we now start increasing voltage on the negative pin of the capacitor, the magnitude of negative charge decreases which means pull from the negative plate of the capacitor on the positive charge also decreases. Due to which positive charge wants to rush out even more which leads to increased voltage on the positive plate. Hmm. Ok, long story short, the capacitor will try to keep the voltage difference between its terminals constant, which means if we increase the voltage on the negative terminal by x volts, the voltage on the positive terminal will also increase by x volts, provided that there is no passage for the charge to leave from the positive terminal. With that in mind, let's try it out on the breadboard. The test circuit is quite simple, all we need is a 100 microfarad capacitor, a diode to charge the capacitor and a potentiometer to provide a variable voltage at the negative pin of the capacitor. Start by connecting all the components as shown and set potentiometer voltage to 0 volts initially. Next, we connect our multimeter between capacitor positive and ground. After turning on the power supply, we can see right now that the voltage across the capacitor is 11.6 volts. But as we start increasing the voltage on the negative pin, the voltage rises on the positive pin too and goes above our supply voltage. Now if I do it fast enough, we can see that it reaches over 23 volts. And also we observe that after it is done increasing, it slowly decreases. The reason is that we do not live in an ideal world. There is always some teensy teensy charge passing through the diode and our voltmeter also have a finite resistance. With that theory finished, we can now look at the actual bootstrapping circuit, which consists of a diode, capacitor, resistor and an NPN transistor, all of which are easily available. Let us now look at the functioning of this circuit. First, I will be replacing the transistor with a switch to make it simpler. Initially, our switch is closed which means 0 volts at the gate. Therefore, MOSFET is turned off and the capacitor is charged to 12 volts. But as soon as we open the switch, the gate voltage becomes 12 volts, which turns the MOSFET on which in turn increases the salt voltage which results in even higher gate voltage due to bootstrap capacitor and our MOSFET stays on. And as soon as you close the switch, the MOSFET turns off and capacitor voltage reaches 12 volts again. You can either repeat this cycle to get PWM signal at the output or keep it on like a normal switch and it will work pretty flawlessly. Wait, here's one tip. When you increase the frequency, remember to reduce the magnitude of resistor. This will help charge up the gate faster. And one important thing that I forgot to tell is that if you are going to use MOSFET turned on for longer times, like for lighting up a bulb, Use a higher value capacitor. And remember that capacitor slowly loses charge. So be sure to turn off the MOSFET for around 20 microseconds between regular intervals to let capacitor charge. If this video helped you, consider liking it and if it didn't, well, there's a button for that.